Hello, everybody. Thank you for joining us today, wherever you are. My name is Adam Kirsch. I am the AVP for our small business sales at Canada uh, here at Salesforce. Really appreciate everybody dialing in. Um, I'm thrilled to be here today at this conference to talk about Salesforce for growing businesses. We have some great stories to share with you today, some best practices, tips, tricks, and product innovation that we're excited to share with all of you. But first, we wanna recognize that growth begins when we put customers in the heart of our business. And whether you're a B2B business or a B2C business, a retail store or a tech company, times are changing and we're really excited to share with you what our customers are doing on the platform today. I always have to start these presentations off with our safe harbor statement. And if you are bored later tonight when you're at home and having trouble sleeping, feel free to jump on our website and uh, read through this. Uh, but I'll shorten it by saying uh, we encourage you to make any buying decisions on any Salesforce product uh, based on what's read readily available today, as we're going to be sharing some future looking uh, product innovations with you uh, on this call today. So Salesforce really uh, is geared towards all size businesses. Um, my segment specifically focuses on the small businesses and we have a ton of customers in small business. Small business is a main focal point of our organization and has been growing with Salesforce since our inception. We have over 150,000 customers just in the small business space alone who have been blazing new trails with Salesforce since 1999. And you can see some great logos on the website here of small businesses that have been using the platform and we're gonna share some of those stories as we go through today's session. So whether you're a growth business, a small business, a fast growing company, however you wanna label it, small businesses similar to you have tough questions as they continue to grow. Do we focus on capital or do we focus on hiring the right talent? Do we focus on scaling and do we do that by growth or by product innovation? Do we focus on cash flow or minimizing risk or finding customer stories, culture? There are a million questions across small business ecosystems that businesses are trying to evaluate and figure out on a daily basis. Let's start with what small businesses are doing to help answer a lot of those questions and how Salesforce makes small businesses more productive. How can we ensure that sales teams are able to engage customers, deliver value, and build amazing partnerships with their client base? Salesforce helps you focus on three areas of your business and more, but what we're talking about today really focuses around sales and accelerating productivity by connecting your different departments in your business. Once we win those deals, how to service those customers and support our customer base really on any channel with connected service which we're not gonna be focusing a lot on this afternoon, and then engaging with customers at the right time with connected marketing, which we'll touch on today. Let's start by talking about sales. I manage personally a team of about 75 sales reps across the country, seven managers, and we all know how tough it is that sales reps do not have time, or how much time are they really focusing on our customers? Research tells us that two thirds of sales reps times is spent not selling, but on administrative tasks. And they're wasted on things like logging emails, building reports, updating information. Um, and 61% of their time, as I said, is, is spent on these administrative tasks. I know in managing these reps across the country that it's really important to have our sales teams focused on servicing their clients and spend less time on a lot of these administrative tasks which is what Salesforce really helps us manage. And we maximize that time in two different ways, and you can easily get started with Salesforce. If you're a small business looking for a quick out-of-the-box CRM application to help you better streamline your business, Salesforce IQ CRM allows you to really get that relationship intelligence for fast-growing businesses. This allows you to build relationships within your system understand which of your reps are connected with which of your customers and build relationships across your customer base 
to help your reps when they're in selling engagements understand if we have existing clients that are connected to other customers in our ecosystem. Our sales cloud takes that one step further as, and is a complete CRM that scales with every part of your business through management, reps, and as you can see by the little picture of the iPad and watch there, allows your reps to access their client data, prep for meetings, et cetera, on the go with Salesforce Sales Cloud. Salesforce Lightning uh, really has been a game changer in helping our customers and small business focus on productivity. You can see this view on your screen here, which is our Kanban view, which allows reps to increase their productivity and has made a massive difference in the way our reps are focusing on their business. So Kanban view allows you to see everything on one screen. You have a previous phone call going on, as you can see by the little picture with Jackie Hernandez. We have our calendar, uh, quoting, and we've added tons of new features to Lightning since anyone on the line who's attended our Dreamforce conference last year. There are amazing new features designed for small businesses. Lightning Voice, this view allows you to see every piece of that customer uh, within one screen. Do they have any open service cases? Any outstanding billing issues? How many opportunities do we have open with that particular client? And it helps your reps by having to toggle from screen to screen or application to application by really giving you one main view of your customer and having all of that insight in one particular view. Salesforce Einstein has made Salesforce one of the smartest CRMs or the smartest CRM in the market. Salesforce allows you to get closer to your customers and have the actual system do the previous research for you. Einstein is, acts as your data scientist by telling your sales staff when is the right time to reach out to this individual. Has there been anything uh, important happening externally in the news that would really make this the right time to reach out to that customer with some insight into what that customer is doing? Business. So as I said, we're not gonna touch on service today, but feel free to follow up with us um, if you want more insight into supporting customers on any different connected service channel. We wanna talk a little bit about marketing. And I already alluded to you know, getting in touch with customers at exactly the right time. And the old way that customers used to market is being rewritten. Uh, the old kind of method of marketing uh, is being transformed. The proliferation of ways prospective buyers can get information and buy products has changed, and people and the way people and companies evaluate products is vastly different. We know back in the day, uh, we used to send out these marketing campaigns, whether it was through television or print or flyers, and all of our existing leads would come in. We'd pass that to sales that would be in charge of that sales cycle, and sales would basically be in charge of bringing that customer to the finish line. Marketing used to push messages about their products and it was a fairly linear process. So think about a commercial or broadcast to all viewers or an ad seen by everybody visiting a certain site. Marketers spent a ton of time guessing about their prospective viewers. We heard phrases like spray and pray. And the downfall of this traditional mass marketing system was that marketers had no way to really understand each and every individual buyer and had to hope that these tailored messages were reaching the right audience. In this world, if the buyer wanted a custom experience, they would still only get this through connecting with a salesperson. And there was a disconnect between marketing and sales as marketers used to think of it as their responsibility as quote unquote top of the funnel or filling their pipeline with leads, but then just handing those leads off to sales with zero collaboration ending their relationship with that particular lead, and fingers crossed, hoping sales was going to close it. Smart marketers have started to rewrite the playbook by delivering this message through multiple channels. And I spoke about this at a conference a little while ago with Google here at the Four Seasons in Toronto um, about the way buyers engage with companies has completely changed. I use myself as an example who was recently in the housing market looking to buy a house, and I thought about when I bought an apartment years ago and I would see an advertisement for a real estate agent or something on a picnic bench, reach out to that agent, 
and they would inform me about the different areas of the city, what the price points were looking like, and sort of take me from that general concept of looking to buy and narrowing my search down and them responsible to provide me all of the information about what was happening in my city. And as I've been going through the process years later, I have a real estate application which tells me all of the houses for sale, all a comparables application which tells me what per square foot houses are going for in the different areas that I'm looking for. And I have a mortgage calculator application which tells me the mortgage rates and how much my monthlies are gonna cost me. By the time I get in touch with my real estate agent, I'm already 90, 95% of the way down the path of what I'm looking for, what the area I'm looking for. And now I only have to rely on that agent to take me down the last 5% of that sales process. So as we can imagine, there's been a pretty huge shift as to how companies are engaging with their buyers. Even though businesses are aware that the shift has happened and buyers are empowered, adaptation to this new methodology is still not that easy. We need both marketing, and sales to fundamentally change the way they do their jobs. We've also seen quite a growing distrust of some of these traditional channels. Buyers are instead picking and choosing amongst other points of engagement as they conduct, as I mentioned, their own research and drive their own decision-making process. So particularly for companies with longer sales cycles that is shared by sales and marketing, this is becoming a highly complex world. And on top of that, it looks vastly different for each and every buyer. In this new age of digital marketing, we've seen this massive expansion of channels and tactics that buyers can engage with and be influenced by as they move towards making a purchasing decision. Of different channels is also generating a ton of new data. So marketers are asking, how can we use this data to actually measure the impact and effectiveness of these channels and tactics? And both your sales and your marketing departments need to adapt. So what businesses are now tasked with is doing this, organizing this complex web of interaction points into a cohesive experience for their buyers. They're tasked with making sure each one of these touch points is personalized and driving towards that final sale. Marketers are tasked with understanding data behind these touch points and use it to further tailor and improve their campaigns which can be a huge challenge when they need to make sense of siloed data and using complex tools. And above all, they're tasked with making sure that this buyer's experience feels extremely smooth and seamless. Even though you're kind of bouncing towards different marketing and sales touch points, and this may take place over a long period of time. So we know that the shift happened and we know that we need to adapt. We know this and we know what it should look like, but what does this B2B buying process actually look like right now? Well, small businesses tell us, and our customers tell us, that 63% of small businesses outgrow their competitors by automating this marketing process. Example of David Bergman, who's a managing director at T3 Advisors, and it's a real estate firm on the topic of real estate for entrepreneurs. He meets a ton of people at conferences, and sometimes he forgets to follow up. And for him and his team, they prioritize information and take action to stay on top of that customer or the customers that matter to him with marketing automation. And we talk about, and David talks to us about, engaging at the right time with Salesforce. So if you haven't yet, you can easily get started by using uh, Salesforce Marketing Cloud. You can build that quality pipeline and have that number one marketing automation for your customers with Pardot, which allows marketing automation to be built into the Salesforce platform. You can also nurture those pipeline from front to back for marketing and sales, which is called Salesforce Engage. And this allows marketing automation for sales to nurture deals right to close. So that wraps up some details about Salesforce for small business gives you a little bit of insight into your playbook on how to grow your business and how to find, win, and keep your business or sell, service, and market to your clients. We really appreciate everybody joining the webinar today. I hope it was a little bit informative for you. And at this point, we would like to open up the floor to take some Q&A.
and see how we can help you answer some questions about your business. So let's take a look at questions that we have uh, coming in from Twitter here. Uh, one question we see is, how do you hire the right salespeople? CXO, uh, it's a great question. And we do a lot of CXO sort of thought leadership events talking about this. And what I'm always preaching on this front is, you know, hiring the right salespeople um, has to do with hiring what you can't teach. So we believe that we can teach things like for example, our playbook, how to demonstrate Salesforce. We can teach our technology, the value propositions, um, how to uncover projects. But I don't believe we can teach things like hustle, passion, business acumen, social EQ, aptitude. So it's important, what I'm always talking to VPs of sales about, is to ensure that you are hiring for what you can't teach and teach what you feel like you can. Another question coming in off the Twitter feed here is marketing is aligned with sales. Probably a great question that uh, a lot of small businesses ask us all the time. And one way to ensure that is to make sure that you have the technology that helps to facilitate that. So, you know, I use Salesforce as an example, and we obviously eat our own dog food here by using the application, but any new lead that comes into the system or any customer, our account executives could see all of the touch points that our customers have had through that marketing channel. So we know where the lead came from, what campaign they're responding to, and all the touch points they've had through our website or any other marketing campaign or event that we ran. And without having to call our marketing department, um, just by the tools being integrated so we can see that actual data within Salesforce. Question coming in here from Rosemary. Um, her real estate website already has a CRM built in. How can Salesforce CRM enforce what they already have? It's a great question, Rosemary. And I think you know a big piece to, to that has to do with linking in your marketing automation to your CRM. I think CRM um, does, if you're talking about basic CRM, does a good job of organizing yourself in terms of the opportunities you're working, your client database, um, logging a lot of the touch points that you've had with your customers, but it's not actually uh, touching the external factors in terms of you know, inbound marketing, marketing from your website. So if I'm in sales for you, can I see the different real estate uh, options that that client has looked at externally online? Have they gotten to us through a Google search? What were they searching before they connected to us? A lot of that information is really important when you're engaging with your customers um, to basically be aligned not only with organizing yourself internally, but also arming your sales team or your agents with what your client is doing outside of just the touch points they've had with your particular organization. We have another question coming in here off the Twitter feed. Um, Adam, what are the most important metrics for your sales teams? It's a great question. And I was speaking on a panel at uh, the Sales TO conference uh, a little while ago um, in talking about managing through the use of data. I think whether you work at Salesforce and wh whether you work somewhere else, anywhere, whether you're selling software, whether you're selling um, real estate, whether you're selling really uh, you know, consulting services, the same data formula applies. Activity, meetings, connecting with customers, visiting customers, good activity equals healthy pipeline, which equals closed business. And I always tell our sales leaders, when we're looking at the data, you're never gonna have a lot of closed business if we don't have a healthy pipeline. We're never going to have a healthy pipeline if we aren't talking to our customers and engaging with our customers. So the three main sort of analytics that I'm constantly tracking is activity, and we break that down into what activity, right? If somebody left 100 voicemails in a given week, it doesn't really help me 
turn the dial on our pipeline. So how many, you know, what we've had out here at Salesforce is, okay, you have a lot of activity. Um, what is that activity? Is it a lunch meeting? Is it a connect with a customer on the phone? Is it an event that they're driven to? And then that will lead to pipeline and that will lead to closed business. So activity, pipeline, and closed business. And we can get into all types of uh, minutiae of that data. What is the pipeline? How long has the pipeline been around? What is our average close rate on that pipeline? But if we look at things and we scale it back to a high level, activity equals pipeline equals closed business. Another question that's come up here uh, from Ian off the, off the feed here is, how does Salesforce define small business? It's a great question, and a lot of companies define their sales segments in many different ways. Some companies define it by revenue, define it by employee size, define it by uh, company locations. For us at Salesforce, as we've continued to expand our portfolio, and theoretically, the goal of our account executives is to be able to sell a license to every employee at, at one of our customer sites. And that's because we have Salesforce for marketing, sales, service, um, field technicians, whatever your role is at a company, there is a potential solution that we can provide to help you run your business. So therefore, we segment our sales teams by employee sizes. So our small business teams and all the companies across Canada that roll into myself and my team are companies under the 150-ish employee segment and down, we consider a, a sort of a, a small growing business. Let's take a question here coming from Kevin. Um, how easy is it to integrate uh, data sources with Salesforce CRM? What is the criteria for a data source to be accepted into the Salesforce ecosystem? So, I mean, if you're looking to bring data into your Salesforce CRM instance, you can use whatever data source you like. We have particular data sources that are already, like data.com, for example, uh, which is formerly Jigsaw that was acquired by Salesforce years ago, that already integrate into Salesforce. So, you know, these are pre-existing data sources that are embedded and native into Salesforce. So, for example, right within the application, I could say, hey, I want to pull up a list of all high-tech companies or CIOs of high-tech companies located in the state of New York. And then I could automatically import that stuff right into Salesforce without having to import from an external data source. But if you have another data source you use, and there are a lot of data sources out there, um, and some are very niche-oriented, if it's you know, a data source of medical clinics in a given area, or a data source of construction projects in a given area, you can Salesforce on your own and import that data right into the system. And we have experts here that help you map that data to the right places within Salesforce. I think that wraps up the questions that we have here. If anybody is looking to get in touch with our team, and I know there's some inquiries here off the funnel that Hey Adam, how do we get in touch with your with your team? Um, feel free to either pop on our website at salesforce.com and fill out a contact me form. Um, you can also email me directly if you like, and I can connect you to the appropriate place. My email is a kirsch a k i r s h at salesforce.com, um, and I'd be happy to direct you in the right location. Thank everybody for dialing in today. Hope it was worth your while and hope everybody has a great rest of your day.